In this video, we're going to take a look at something that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. It's also amazingly useful. In previous videos, we've talked about how we have to kind of guess as to what the zeros of a polynomial are in order to factor it. This is the thing that's going to let us make good, educated guesses. Now, like I said, this is really complicated reading. It says if we've got a polynomial, both the leading coefficient and the constant term aren't zero, and also we've got integer coefficients. This is really important that we have only whole numbers for our coefficients. If we've got that, then anything that's a zero that's also a rational number can always be written as a factor of the constant over a factor of the leading coefficient. We say that again. Anything that's just a simple fraction that when I plug it into the polynomial makes that thing zero can always be written as a factor of the constant term over a factor of the leading coefficient. So if we take this then, what are the possible rational zeros of this polynomial? Well, in this case, my constant, a sub zero using the terms up there, is a negative eight. What are the factors of a negative eight? Well, let's ignore the negative for a second. One divides into eight, two divides into eight, four divides into eight, and eight divides into eight. Now always though, because of the way negatives work, we can always multiply things. Either one of these things could be positive or negative. In this case, my leading coefficient, a sub three, is just one. And what are the factors of one? Well, just one, but again, it could be a positive or negative. So anything that's a possible rational zero here is one of these numbers, a factor of the constant, over a factor of that leading coefficient. Well, dividing by positive or negative one, that's not really gonna change this list. So the possible rational zeros are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight. Let's take a look at a little bit more complicated example. What are the possible rational zeros of this one? Well, here, my constant, the factors are the factors of 12, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And I'm just going to put a plus or minus outside the whole thing instead of putting a plus or minus on each one individually. My leading coefficient is also a 12, so it's the same exact set. So what are the possible rational zeros? It's any one of these numbers divided by any one of these numbers. So let's see, if I take one over one, that gives me one. One over two, that'd be a half. One over three, one over four, one over six, and one over 12. Okay, two over one is a two. Two over two, well, that's just one, so I'm not gonna put it in there again. 2 over 3 is not in the list. 2 over 4, though, is a half, is already in there. 2 over 6 is a third, which is already in there. And 2 over 12 is a sixth, which is already in there. No need to list those again. 3 over 1 is a 3. 3 halves is not in our list. 3 fourths, well, 3 over 3 is 1, is in our list. 
3 fourths is not on our list. 3 sixths is a half is in there. 3 twelfths is a quarter is in there. 4 over 1. 4 over 2 is 2, which is already in there. 4 thirds. 4 over 4 is 1. 4 over 6 is 2 thirds. 4 over 12 is 1 third. All those things are in there already. 6 can be divided by 1. 6 over 2 is a 3, which I've got. 6 over 3 is a 2, which I've got. 6 over 4 is 3 halves, which I've got. 6 over 6 is 1, which I've got. 6 over 12 is 1 half, which I've got. Finally, 12 over 1 is 12. 12 over 2 is 6, I've got it. 12 over 3 is 4, I've got it. 12 over 4 is 3, I've got it. 12 over 6 is 2, I've got it. 12 over 12 is 1, I've got it. So a lot more possibilities than in the last example, but still fairly easy to get a nice list of what are all the possibilities. And it's certainly easier to guess from a list of 15, well, really 30, since we got plus or minus possibilities rather than an infinite number of possibilities. So how can we actually use this? Well, it goes back to a kind of problem we did a couple of videos back. Let's say I want to factor x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x minus 8. Well, we can do this as soon as we know what a zero is. I only have these possibilities for what that zero could be. So, I always start with the easiest one. So, I'm going to check x equals 1. Is that a zero? 1 cubed plus 5 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 8 1 plus 5 plus 2 is 8, minus 8 is 0. That is, in fact, a 0. So that means that x minus 1 is a factor. So if I divide this by x minus 1, again, I'll use synthetic division. So I get 1, 5, 2, negative 8. 1 times 1 is 1. Add to get 6. Add to get 8, 0. So this is x minus 1 times x squared plus 6x plus 8. And of course, that factors very easily as x plus 2, x plus 4. And there we go. From nothing, not knowing what any zeros were, using this rational root theorem, we were able to break this thing down to the point where it was very easy to factor. Let's try a more complicated one. So, that same thing I had before, 12x cubed plus 40x squared plus 41x plus 12, we've got this whole long list of possible rational zeros. Just to save time on the video here, it turns out that actually none of the whole numbers work. So let's skip to, how, I'm just going to go ahead to show you how this is done. Let's go ahead and show a negative one half. If I check a negative one half, I get 12 times a negative one-half cubed plus 40 times a negative one-half squared plus 41 times a negative one-half plus 12. So that's 12 times negative one-eighth. Be negative 12 over 8. Negative one-half squared is one-quarter times 40 is plus 10. 
negative 41 halves plus 12. And so we've got negative 3 halves minus 41 halves is negative 43, 44 halves is negative 22 plus the 10 and plus 12 gives me 0. Okay. So that means since negative 1 half was a 0, x plus 1 half is a factor. And so that means that we've got, again, we can do a synthetic division, put a negative 1 half in the box compared to 12, 40, 41, 12. Bring that down. Times a negative 1 half would be negative 6, gives me 34. Times a negative 1 half gives us negative 17, gives me 24. Times a negative 1 half is negative 12, gives me a 0. Okay, at this point, this thing says we've got x minus 1 half times 12x squared plus 34x plus 24. This is a little bit ugly. I'm going to fix this a bit though. I notice that everything left now is a factor of 2. So I can write this as x minus a half times 2 times 6x squared plus 17x plus 12. And now, let's go ahead and distribute the 2 into this. So that would give me a 2x minus 1 times 6x squared plus 17x plus 12. Now, this isn't completely factored, but I'm going to stop here because from there, we could just use the AC method to figure it out from there. We could go back and continue doing it, trying to find another rational zero, and that'd work, but plugging in those fractions into the ugly polynomial is a little bit annoying. It's probably easier just to go back to the AC method from there.